Hi everyone, my name's Liz and I'm the baker that sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you have subscribed or commented on previous videos. It's really nice to um, obviously not see you but uh, chat to you again. So today's video is my Q&A. So um, over on Instagram I put a Q&A out to say if anyone's got any questions they want to ask I'm going to film a vlog where I answer those questions. And then on my last video, which is the unboxing of the So Haley Jane um, sewing subscription box, I also put, if you've got any questions, uh, pop them in the comments below and I will answer them. Now, I am amazed, actually, that I've got tons of questions. So I've got them all written down on here. Um, 15 questions in total. So I'm hoping the vlog's not massively long, but you might want to grab a cup of tea because um, some of the questions, I'm going to go into quite a lot of detail to try and answer them as much as possible. Um, I'm going to start by saying what I'm wearing, and in my last few vlogs, I'm really terrible. I'll put my I put my me measurements down below, and I always do that, but I'm dreadful at remembering to say what size I cut. Um, so I'm wearing one of my most favourite patterns. I must have made about ten of these. It's the Deer and Doe Maya Sotis dress uh, in this lovely fabric from uh, Sew Me Sunshine. Now I made this last year. Uh, it's very heavily gathered, it's got the buttons down here. Now on this version, I didn't lengthen the bodice. On my last couple of ones that I've made, I've lengthened the bodice. So the bodice currently sits just sort of under my bust. And I now, I prefer it to be a bit lower. So I've added a couple of inches on the last few that I've made. I have cut out the size, this is one of the questions, uh, size 38. Um, and I'll put my measurements down below so you can see how that um, sort of correlates to the, the pattern sizes and my body measurements. The area that I struggle to fit is my hips and my bottom because my hips are really narrow compared to where my waist is and my bust measurement. Um, but luckily with this pattern it's really roomy so you don't need to worry about that. Um, yeah and it's lovely and floaty and I'm wearing this today. So today is Thursday and I'm wearing it because I'm taking part in the A Hint of Print over on Instagram. So you're given sort of a, a, a prompt word each day and today is animal print. So um, I was wearing my tiger lounge wear um, but I've taken that off and I've put this on because I'm going to take my girls out for a walk in a little bit. And I'm, I, One I thought I would get too hot and two I thought I'd get some odd looks so I've got changed. So I'm wearing the Deer and Doe Maya Sotis dress in this lovely breezy floaty fabric. And later I've got um, a virtual staff meeting and I thought I'd look a bit weird if I kept my lounge wear on and I looked a bit like a child. So let's get on with the questions. Um, so first question was best patterns for beginners but not necessarily the easiest pattern but more aspirational so teaching you a skill so I've got a couple of things to say about that and I've written, made little notes just so that I don't forget everything that I wanted to say um, I would say if you're a beginner and you um, want to know which patterns to use there's loads of blogs out there so go and have a look at those but um, I approach sewing like what's going to give me a new skill um, you know, I still struggle to see myself as more than a, a sort of advanced sewer. I know I probably fall into the intermediate category, but I feel like there's so much that I still need to learn about fitting um, and just making things perfect. Um, so I would say, in relation to the best patterns for the beginner for a beginner sewist, but not necessarily the easiest pattern, I've got a couple of um, independent pattern companies that I would definitely recommend because they really hold your hand throughout the um, sewing process and the first one's Tilly, Tilly in the Buttons. She's got some amazing um, patterns out there that really hold your hand. The Clio is a great beginner pattern but if you do want to improve your skills, sorry I've, I've like everything's on the floor so I can just grab hold of it when I need to. Um, I would say, what did I do with it, the um, Bobby Pinafore, I have got it here actually. So. If you've made the clear and you think, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, I can do that, that's great. And you want a beginner pattern or a pattern that's beginner friendly but it's going to give you some more skill, the Bobby Pinafore is brilliant. I've made a couple of these and I absolutely love them because you have to do buttonholes. Um, attaching jeans buttons is a skill. Um, you've got the strap and the crossover. It's, slight, it's more fitted than um, the Clio. You've got the waistband that you need to attach and I love making it all lovely and neat inside. And then you've got these lovely pockets and then you also line the pockets and you line the bib. So there's a lot more skill involved in the, in the Bobby pinafore than there is in the Clio pinafore. So I would choose, I would suggest that one. I'm just looking for the pattern because I definitely brought the pattern in. Aha, it's here. 
Uh, so yeah, it's the Bobby Pinafore, and they do describe it as confident beginners. Tilly's patterns are brilliant, her instructions are amazing, and what she tends to do when she's got a pattern that she's released is, there's a sew along as well, but the, the illustrations and the step by step are just incredible for beginners. So if you're looking for something that's going to challenge you, I would definitely recommend Tilly, and then her books again are incredible for that. So. I'm sure I'm not the only person that used the Love at First Stitch book to teach me how to sew and it gradually increases in skill uh, with the patterns in there. So you start with the scarf uh, and then it moves on. There's lots of information about how to use your machine um, and then she talks about, so then there's pyjamas which I know most of us start with the pyjama bottoms but then there's a dress that you go on to do. She talks about um, how to draft your own patterns. Uh, waistbands and then there's like top tips and things so yeah there's a skirt as well so I'd recommend that book because there are projects in there that help support you if you're a beginner but you're looking for more skills uh, so that's that one and then she's got her stretch book as well which is great for pushing your skills um, and teaching yourself something new uh, then I've got written down um, the avid seamstress so I'm in the process of finishing off this is my sundress here um, I'm in the process of finishing off the sundress. Now the reason I've included the Avid Seams dress is because their instructions are incredible. So even if, like this is quite a sort of, how, what do they describe it as? Um, I'll put what they describe it as. I don't know if it's an intermediate pattern or an advanced beginner. Um, hmm, they don't say... Oh, intermediate, sorry, it's on. It's just there. Intermediate. But I would say if you're a confident beginner, have a go at this because the instructions are amazing. I mean, just really clear photos, step by step. The bit I like about Avid Seamstress is they have a lot of before you start information. Um, and the way that the sundress is constructed is you, th there's a lot of opportunities to try it on first. So if you want to get the fit right, there's a lot of opportunities to do that. So any Avid Seamstress patterns, I would definitely say. Um, but yeah, if you're a beginner and you want to improve and you want something that's going to really challenge you, I'd look at a skill that maybe that's going to teach you. So whether that is about fit, whether it's about inserting a zip because you've never inserted a zip, whether it's um, doing buttonholes because you've never done buttonholes before, I would approach a pattern in terms of skill and what you're going to get from it. And actually, the, one of the one of the first things I sewed was pyjamas and then I just jumped straight in there and I sewed up a blazer and I've never ever done any outerwear before. This has got a million faults but I still wear it um, and it was a lined blazer as well so I lined it in this lovely floral fabric um, yeah with the with, with sort of the band and the collar but it's I don't know what type of collar you call that because it's sort of tacked down and then the cropped sleeves um, because I wanted to learn how to make a jacket so I picked the pattern took me forever but I really took my time and I managed to do it so I would look at the skill that you're going to get from the pattern um, rather than what it says on the envelope um, and the Avid Seamstress are great for supporting beginners then um, Kokowara Crafts her patterns are great so she's got one called the Honeycomb Dress um, and you would learn the burrito method and she really talks you through how to do the burrito method and I found that a really great pattern for teaching me that skill. I'll see if I can put images in here of me wearing the Kokowawa honeycomb dress but also pictures of the pattern so that you can see what it looks like. Um, so yeah, my top tips for um, choosing a pattern for beginners that's not necessarily the easiest but aspirational is ignore the skill level but look at learning at least, at least one new skill from that pattern. Um, pay attention to the fabric recommendations because you can, like this blazer, actually, although it was really challenging for me, it's using a cord with no stretch and it's a really stable fabric. So actually, and also there were no fastenings. The skill I learned from that was um, lining a garment um, and the fabric was quite stable so it was an okay pattern for me to use as a complete beginner. Um, so yeah, pay attention to the fabric. And then look at what, what you want to learn from that pattern. I keep saying that, but is it you want to learn to insert a zip? Or do you want to learn more about fitting? Or do you want to learn about um, adding pockets? Or do you want to learn about putting a collar onto something? So the myosotis is great for learning about um, putting a collar on and also for learning buttonholes because there's only three buttonholes. It's really loose fit. So the myosotis is another top pattern 
for uh, beginners that want to um, learn a new skill, so aspirational beginner patterns. So I hope that answered your question. I'm sorry if it was a bit rambly. Okay, question number two. How did you meet your other half and what does he think of your sewing? So I met my now husband um, when I was at university in Leeds and he was working at BT um, and we met through one of my friends. She was going on a date and she didn't want to go on her own uh, with his best friend. So he was dragged along, I was dragged along um, and yeah, ended up um, getting on really well. Uh, spent the whole evening talking, which for me, I'm quite, um, I can be really shy in social situations, especially when I don't know anybody. Um, but yeah, drank cocktails, had a really good night. And then the next day he invited me round to his house for dinner, well, for Sunday lunch. Uh, and he cooked a veg lasagna. Um, and then, yeah, we just, from there, um, started dating. And then six months later, he moved back down to London um, because he started a PGCE. And I got my first teaching job working at a school in Huddersfield. Um, but it was just a year's contract. So at the end of his training and the end of my year's contract, we decided whoever got... Um, a job, a permanent job, would decide where we live. And he got offered a job on his placement, um, one of his PGCE placements. So I ended up moving like 200 miles because I'm originally from Manchester and I've lived in London ever since. Um, so yeah, and in terms of what does he think about my sewing, he's a massive gamer, loves playing on the Xbox. He also loves all the Marvel. I think I've said this in one of my blogs before. So he loves the fact that I've got something to keep me busy. Um, yeah, and I think he's he. Um, I think he just loves how excited I get about sewing, and it's something that keeps me busy. Um, and it means that he can play on his Xbox, and I'm not going to moan or whinge, uh, which is great. I do find it funny sometimes to think that he's in the front room playing on his Xbox, and I'm in the little hallway uh, sewing, and we'll go for hours without talking when the kids are in bed. But we're both happy, um, and we do spend time together. Um, yeah, so I just think he's happy that I've got a hobby and equally I'm happy that he's got a hobby. Uh, so yeah, I hope that answered your question. Uh, number three was somebody put, um, that they were a fashion designer and they wanted to know what I do. So I am a primary school teacher. I am the assistant head of the early years at the school that I work at. So I oversee the nursery and the reception. Um, it's a big primary school that, well it's not a primary school actually, it's an infant school and I teach in reception. So I'm in class four days a week, out of class one day a week for my sort of leadership part. Um, and I love it, absolutely love it. Um, I've been teaching since 2006. Um, yeah, and it's a really tough job, really hard, but it's so incredibly rewarding and I absolutely love that. Um, and then alongside teaching, I have a cake business. So I um, do markets, obviously not at the moment because all of that sort of stopped at the moment. Um, so yeah. That's what I do. Next question, how much of your wardrobe is handmade versus ready to wear? So the last year and a bit, definitely most of my wardrobe is handmade. Um, the only thing that I wear now that is ready to, ready to wear is jeans. I haven't plucked up the courage to make jeans yet, but I'm hoping once all of this is over and we can start going out again. Um, I know Shona at Satisfaction runs a jeans making course, so I'm hoping to get book booked onto there. And then the other thing that I um, wear that's ready to wear is uh, underwear, so bras and knickers. Um, although one of the inner haystack pack patterns recently was the Josie bra and pants. So I'm hoping to change that and I've got it all cut out ready to go. I've got this beautiful jersey from Like So Amazing and this beautiful lace uh, from Like So Amazing and I don't know if I can get that out to show you properly. This is the lace, it's absolutely stunning. I don't know if you can see that, it's so pretty. Uh, so I'm hoping to change that. So hopefully uh, that's sort of, um, I've got a twirl at the moment and then I've got this one to go. Um, so hopefully my underwear will then be me made but one of the reasons, I think this is a question as well actually, one of the reasons I started to learn to sew was, one, I was inspired by the sewing bee, I'm sure lots of us are, um, and two, I was so fed up with buying things from shops um, and it just not fitting. So I'd go in, I if I, go, if I buy stuff from shops, I am usually uh, UK size eight, but I would find, um, because of my measurements, the, it would be really tight on my bust 
and really um, like fits my hips and waist or it'd be massive on my hips and waist and then really fit my bust. So I was just really fed up of clothes just not fitting me and um, if you follow me on Instagram you'll know that I love bright colours, bright prints, um, I don't really have a huge number of plain garments in my wardrobe and I just wasn't inspired or feeling inspired by a lot of high street things so I started to learn to sew. So most of my wardrobe I wear me made every single day so it's just jeans and my underwear that is not me made. So I hope that answered your question. Uh, question number five was favourite book. Um, so I listen to a lot of audio books, I also listen to a lot of podcasts but in my house, we are huge, huge Harry Potter fans. So if I, if I had to pick my top favourite book, it would be Harry Potter. We listen to the Audible books in the car when we've got long journeys to make. Um, and we've just finished listen, listening to all of the books and we're currently doing a Harry Potter uh, film marathon. And then I'm also about to jump back into The Evolution, which is the second of the um, trilogy book. The first one was Eve of Man, and this is the next one that's come out by Giovanna and Tom Fletcher, so I can't wait to read that. So that's what I'm reading at the moment. But if I had to pick one book or one series of books, it would have to be Harry Potter. We love them as a family, absolutely obsessed. Um, so question number six, how long have you been sewing for? I started learning to sew in March 2017. Now I had to go back and have a look at when I first started sewing. I'm surprised that I've been sewing for that long. It still feels relatively new. But yeah, March 2017 I started sewing and I haven't stopped, if I'm honest. Uh, right, the next question is buttonhole or neck of waistband of a shirt dress any top tips so I have got a few top tips which I hope will help and I've got them scribbled down so forgive me if I look down so a couple of things to make sure that you've got first if you're doing buttonholes anyway but also on like the the waistband I mean this is the neckband but it's still quite thick collars um, make sure you've got some fray check that will stop your fabric from fraying um, you don't have to have one of these I use a seam on ripper but I know lots of people use a buttonhole cutter for a neater cut um, and also um, something that I've recently absolutely loved using is the expanding sewing gauge because it helps you to mark your buttonholes so they're really accurate always stabilize the area so if it's not interfaced then you can get tear away stabilizer which is really good practice 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 I always do about four or five practices on thick fabric before I put my garment through the machine and then adjust the tension if you need to. So this is something I've learned to do recently. So um, a nice balanced buttonhole shouldn't have visible bobbin thread. So you might need to adjust the tension if necessary. Read your sewing machine manual. I know that's really obvious. Um, I'm dreadful for not reading it first before I do something new on my machine. Mark your buttonholes. Something else that I found really helps me with my buttonholes is new needle. So before I start doing my buttonholes, I change the needle so it's nice and sharp. Um, and then also if you're going to be sewing like a waistband or somewhere where it's really thick just make sure that you've graded the seams so that the buttonhole is, is where there's as few layers as possible so just try and make it as less chunky as possible so grade those seams as much as you can um, if it's something like jeans and you're using a top stitching thread you might find that that thread is not giving the correct tension so you might want to switch it to regular thread and that might help um, if your um, presser foot is getting stuck on the waistband or your um, buttonhole foot is getting stuck on the waistbands, just use a normal foot. You can just use a normal foot and then do a um, dense zigzag stitch. But you will have to be mindful of moving your needle left and right for that. Um, and then I had, um, yeah, so if you're getting stuck on the waistband, you can use a normal foot and a dense zigzag stitch. Set the stitch to 0.5 or 0. Um, and then the width of the short wide bar tack is four and the narrow long bar tack is two so you need to make sure then that you're moving your needle position to the left or the right uh, something else that you can make sure that you do is if it's really really thick fabric whack, in, whack it with a hammer to flatten it that's a really good tip so it just a bit like when you're doing that with um, I'm vegetarian but I don't do it but with chicken to do squashing the chicken so just get a hammer and lightly give it a tap just to flatten it flatten it a bit more but the top tips from that really are grade the seam so it's as thin as possible give it a little whack and you might need to adjust your tension um, 
So yeah, I hope that answered your question about buttonholes on the neckband and the waistband, but those are my top tips. Okay, question number eight. Uh, which pattern have you had the most fun sewing and why? So I had to really ponder this one because when I'm sewing a pattern, I love to learn a new skill. Um, I love sewing any patterns that guide me through it and give me really clear instructions. So the Myosotis is one of them. Um, Kokowawa Crafts, um, Anna, she does some sew-alongs, as does Tilly. So all my patterns that I've really enjoyed sewing are Tilly and the Buttons, just because the support around that um, pattern is amazing. The team work incredibly hard to make sure that the pattern instructions are really clear, but also there's usually some sew-alongs. So I've found any Tilly and the Buttons patterns really enjoyable to sew. Um, but also Kokowawa Crafts, Anna makes sure that she does a lot of sew-along videos too, and her instructions are incredible. So I've really enjoyed that. Um, what makes it fun for me is the thought of the garment afterwards. So a lot of the patterns that I've had the most fun sewing, it's because I can think about how it's going to look and I'm really excited to get to use that fabric. So um, Dear and Don't My Sotis, you can use really fun, wacky pr um, printed fabric for, so I love that. Um, I would probably say my Eden coat was probably one of my most fun this is Tilly and Button's Eden coat. It's probably my most enjoyable. I learned tons making it, absolutely tons. I learned about lining properly. I had so much fun with it. And I used a fabric that had been in my stash for ages and it's a really fun fabric. It's this cactus print and I just love it. So I think something that I've learned, um, something that I've learned a new skill from, something that's been enjoyable because I'm not scratching my head all the time thinking, how do I do that? and something that there, there is a lot of support for out there. So yeah, I can't answer one specific pattern. My Sotis is probably my favorite dress pattern to make. And also actually any, um, the Sirocco, oh it's here. Love the Sirocco jumpsuit. It comes together really quickly for a jumpsuit. Secret pajamas, because it's jersey. Uh, it's got fantastic pockets. I absolutely love the Sirocco and I've made some really, well I think really beautiful Siroccos. I don't want that to sound big headed but they're fun to wear. Like I've made a um, leopard print, I'm just looking at it in my wardrobe, a leopard print one which I absolutely loved wearing and then I've made one that's more for the summer which is, it's got palm leaves all over it. I'll see if I can insert photos but I love it. So I think it's more what, what fabric but to be honest I love buying fabric anyway. I think it's a separate hobby um, and all of the fabric that I've got I love, so I just love making clothes anyway. Um, question number nine, how did I get into teaching? Um, so I knew from probably about the age of seven, eight, that I wanted to be a teacher. I had some incredible teachers when I was at primary school. Uh, one particular teacher, uh, Miss Middleton, she was my reception teacher, I think, was just so kind and caring. I absolutely adored her and I looked up to her. Um, and yeah, she really inspired me to want to be a teacher. The head teacher that I had at my primary school really inspired me. Um, and then when I went to secondary school, I found secondary school really hard, not in terms of academic, because um, I do love learning. I absolutely love learning. Um, I found it difficult because I was so painfully shy. I'm a twin, and when we went to secondary school, we were separated. Um, we were put in different form groups, we were at different parts of the school and it was my first experience of not having that comfort of my twin being there. She's really loud, really outspoken, amazing, makes friends really easily, whereas I find that really difficult. Even now, social situations, I have to really gear myself up for. So I found secondary school really tough. I, found I, I was bullied a lot and I just didn't enjoy it at all. I found it really difficult. And that inspired me and motivated me to want to become a teacher so that I could help anybody else that was ever in that situation because I'd hate that um, and I, although I work with early years um, it's not secondary um, I, I feel honoured that I am part of their first experience of school and I want to make it as fun and as easy for them as possible and I feel lucky that I can be part of their first experiences of making friends and making sure that it's a really happy experience for them. Um, so yeah, I jumped straight into teaching from doing my A-levels, went to uni, did the four year BA honours and then went straight into teaching um, and love it. Like I said, it's hard, but I absolutely love it. 
Then somebody said, where do I live? Because it looks really flat over my fence. So a lot of my photos I take on our roof garden. I live in a flat in London. Um, where the floor that I live on, we've got a roof garden. So it does look really flat because you can't see any of the houses and things. Um, we have a lovely view of Richmond Park. Um, I can see Wembley, I can see Kew Gardens, um, but that's why it looks really flat because it's a roof garden. Um, somebody said, why am I called the baker that sews? So I am a teacher, um, that's my main job, but I also love baking and my Instagram account started as um, Ruby and Lola's Cake, which is my cake business, um, but then I changed it when I started sharing a lot more sewing. So I keep my baking things on my baking Instagram page and then this is mainly about sewing, but baking is a big part of my life too, so that's why I'm called the baker that sews. Um, how long have you been sewing? So I've been sewing since March 2017, so three years now, and how did I learn? So I had my sewing machine for years and years, and then it sat in the corner for ages, and then my husband threatened to sell it, and then I um, didn't want him to sell it, so I decided, okay, this is the year I learned to sew. So I booked myself onto a, it was an originally six week um, sewing course, um, and it was all around how to learn, uh, how to learn, it was all around learning to use your machine, how to use your machine, what all the stitch settings look like, uh, and then just putting together some simple projects. So we made a pin cushion, uh, and then we made a zip bag, um, and the last thing I made was some simple pajamas. Um, and it was teaching us how to read a pattern and how to cut out the fabric and then stitch together a really simple pattern. I ended up only doing, I think, three weeks of the course because school got in the way and then I ended up poorly so I couldn't attend a few sessions and I just never got around to booking back on. So from that, I then um, sewed up the batine. I don't know if I've got the pattern here, actually. The, oh yeah, I have Tilly and the Buttons batine, which is a beginner pattern. I sewed up a couple of those in just a cotton fabric so I didn't really have a clue about fabrics to begin with and then I jumped in and made the blazer and then from there on in I just fell in love with sewing and I so yeah there on in it cut me off sorry uh, so there on in uh, I just fell in love with sewing and I've just jumped in um, bought the Tilly and the Buttons uh, Love at First Stitch book worked my way through there and then started on Instagram and just I get inspired so much by fabric or by what other people are sewing that like, I love the sewing community on Instagram um, so yeah I hope that answered that question um, I sort of started with a sewing course and then self-taught and used patterns to help me that are really well written so the Tilly and the Buttons I would definitely recommend they really hold your hand and the Avid Seamstress um, and Kokowawa they've sort of helped me learn to sew so the next question is, what, what is it about sewing that brings you the most joy and is that the reason you wanted to sew? So this is sort of twofold. Um, pattern, fabric brings me so much joy. I love print, you know, this is beautiful. Um, oh, I forgot to say, I'll share this at the end actually. Uh, Nina Lee Carnaby is another really good beginner. Um, this was one of my Maya Sotuses. The Bloomsbury blouse. Um, like they're all really loud prints and I absolutely love being able to turn something, um, you know, an amazing piece of fabric into something wearable and knowing that nobody else has got that. Although recently I've um, been twinning quite a lot with people on Instagram, which is also really fun. Um, I feel like we're in our secret little sewing club that nobody outside sewing is going to be wearing what you've made, but it's quite nice to know somebody else is wearing something that you've you know, something similar to what you've made, which is really lovely. Um, and it's it's been really lovely to get inspiration from other people, but also know that other people look at what you're making and get some inspiration too. I just absolutely love the sewing community. It's, it's so lovely and friendly. Um, so yeah, it's great. Um, so the question, what is it that brings you the most joy? It's being able to turn some fabric into something wearable. Um, but it's also that sense of community that comes with sewing, which is really lovely. Um, and also making something that fits me. Like I said, when I bought things from the high street, they didn't fit. They'd either fit the top really well and the, the bottom not, or the bottom really well and the top not. Um, I also really love being able to sew something that's showing my personality. As a really quiet person, as someone that is shy, I do use clothes to sort of show off some of my personality that wouldn't necessarily come through in a conversation or a social situation because 
I get quite overwhelmed when it's busy and there's lots of people I tend to just stay really quiet I find it quite I don't like being center stage basically um, and if there's lots of people and I start talking I feel like then I'm gonna have to hold center stage and I'm not confident enough to do that and then I get the whole self-doubt of well I don't think I'm that interesting to listen to but um, which is silly because we've all got something exciting and interesting to talk about it's just my personality um, so I love being able to sew because it shows off my personality um, I love being able to sew because I feel part of this lovely community and everybody's really wonderful and supportive and I love being able to make garments that fit my body properly and then they make me feel really good about myself um, number 14 was what am I planning to do with the rainbow sweater knit um, this is from the dab hand it's absolutely gorgeous it's sort of vintagey retro vibe fabric so I want to make a t-shirt I think and I'm either going to use the Tilly in the Buttons Nora and hack it because I don't want long sleeves I want short sleeves but I quite like the loose fit or I'm going to make the uh, Tilly in the Buttons Tabitha t-shirt I think um, so that's what I'm planning to use that for because I, I want to get lots of wear out of it and I know a short crop t-shirt I would get lots of wear out of it and um, the other option I thought was the Bertha cardigan but I don't know if I would wear that as much as a cardigan because it's quite bright with the rainbow stripe and I don't have a lot of plain in my wardrobe so I'm not sure the Bertha cardigan would be the right pattern for that and then the last question was um, asking about the size that the my sewed dress so I sewed up the size 38 but what I like to do, like I did on this one, is I lengthened the bodice by, it must have been about three inches actually, because I added quite a chunk. Thinking about where it lands it just under my bust here, uh, I added probably about three or four inches actually. So I made the size 38. A um, couple of suggestions, not from me, but what other people have recommended on my vlogs, that, which I thought was worth sharing, was... When I talked about the fat quarters from the So Heavy Jane box, somebody suggested that you can also use them to make bias binding. Fantastic tip, I'd completely forgotten about that. So you can use, if you've got fat quarters, use them to make bias binding. And then somebody recommended a... Sorry about that, hay fever is still causing havoc. Um, somebody recommended a shop for um, buttons. So it's called Ribbon Boon, uh, Ribbon Boon, not Ribbon Boon. Ribbon Moon, I'll put a link down below, sorry. Ribbon Moon Buttons and Haberdashery. Um, and they are really reasonably priced apparently, so check those out if you're looking for buttons or haberdashery. Um, someone also asked, um, am I doing Me Made May? Yes, I am. I'm really excited about taking part in Me Made May again. Um, I've had a few thoughts about what I'm gonna do. I haven't made my pledge yet. Um, I think my pledge will be quite simple, but I think I'm gonna play around with colour. Um, there was an Instagram rainbow challenge, which I'm gutted I didn't take part in. I should have done because I absolutely love colour in my wardrobe. So I think I'm going to play around with colour for Me Made Me. So I'm really looking forward to um, taking part in that again. Let me know down below if you're taking part in Me Made Me and what you're pledging. Um, so my next vlog, I think, will be a roundup of In A Hint Of Print challenge that's taking part on Instagram. I'll share all the makes that I wore for the week. A couple of days I've worn a few things. So like today, I got changed because I've got a virtual uh, staff meeting later and we're going on a walk. Um, but yeah, I'll do a roundup of that. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for um, sending in your questions. I know this vlog is really long. Um, let me know what you're getting up to and if you haven't already let me know who you are on, on Instagram because I love following other sewists. Take care, have a really lovely day and I'll be back soon. Bye!